we see. What do you think? You're about to be buried alive. From Los Angeles, where we're rocking and rolling, it's the award-winning Doc Soup. Greg Kinnear back with you, ready to take a look at talk shows one more time, looking at just the highlights of the ones that matter. Coming up, you're going to eat a dozen tacos and watch your love life improve right before your very eyes. That's right, folks. In just a moment from now, <laughs> gold diggers also are coming up, and... Women and Guns Magazine. I'll explain in just a few moments. First up, though, it's time to satisfy our female viewers out there with a little highlight from our friend Shirley. Nora Hayden. She's basically every ex-husband's worst nightmare. Not only has she written a book about her ex's subpar performance in bed, she's now touring around North America talking about it to pretty much everyone. Take a look at this. I was married for eight years and I never had an orgasm with my husband. I faked it every single time we made love. My husband thought I was the sexiest person that ever lived, and all my friends thought I was some sexy hot stuff, and I never had an orgasm, and I thought there was something the matter with me, because every single time we made love, my husband had an orgasm, and it's a physiological difference. The male sex organs are on the outside of his body for the most part, the female sex organs, for the most part, are on the inside. I so, knew it! So what, what feels incredible, what it. feels incredible to a guy doing what comes naturally doesn't feel good to his wife, but you see, he doesn't know that. Okay, let me go back to the second yeah. hour. You were married for eight years. You never had an orgasm. Yes. Did your, hus your husband have no idea? Not a clue. Now, now, I have to tell you something. You know that there's no physical way that a man can tell that a woman is faking it. All men think they can tell. I have had thousands of men say to me, well, uh, Nora, I know, I know, I know some, I know some women fake it, but my wife doesn't. Every man thinks his wife is different. All right, this woman needs to be stopped. It's that kind of dangerous thinking that could bring a nation to its knees. Nora Hayden's bestseller, How to Satisfy a Woman Every Time, and have her beg for more came out some time ago it deals with obviously love making and various techniques on this thursday show shirley meets parents who say their little angels are going to hell in a hand basket you see the show focuses on good kids who turn bad thursday well, to quote E's poet laureate, Big Boy Medlin, there's nothing that excites a woman quite as much as a man with a mature abdominal region. Mm, those are words, aren't they? These next guests from the Ricky Lake Show concur with Big. They believe being overweight has improved their love lives. The show had a very nice discussion going on, and then these two skinny fellas on the end of the panel stood up, and bam! They started this stimulating conversation. The way I see it, sex with any of these two people would be sweaty, oh, smelly, God. <laughs> and most of all, and most of all, and most of all, floppy. Oh. That, may be. That, 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 that may be, but let me tell you, I'll have a lot more better time with one who loves it better than going out and finding some thin woman just once in one night. So, yeah, and you don't sure, get sweaty, absolutely. darling? If you ain't yeah, sweaty, you ain't sweaty. having a good time, oh, man. Please? Sweaty, and then smelly, and then sloppy. It doesn't get smelly. Right? It doesn't you know, get if smelly. You if you ain't sweating, you ain't lasted long enough to let them have ah, it. Ah, that's the key right there. So last, last, that's right. I have tried it because of the fact that I was overweight and knows what it feels like to be dumped on because of being fat. I, I, have tried, I have tried sleeping with a heavy woman, and I could not do it. Well, it, was, that's it, was, your, it was just that's all up here that's your how, how can you remain physically and sexually excited with someone if they're physically disgusting but, now, but wait. that's what you like you like the slimmer person right he said something very important he said something about endurance okay endurance if somebody's fat and overweight they can't like you know take that pounding type thing that goes on for a long time you know what i'm saying Was it just me, or was that like the most asinine discussion ever held in a public forum? 
Anyway, these guys were obviously kind of mean-spirited, and everybody got kind of bummed out in the audience, and then... Yeah, you in the back row. What did you... It's not the size of the ocean, it's the motion of the ocean. Whoa! There you go, setting the record straight, giving up your baby Thursday on Ricky's show. Some pregnant teens confront the possibility of giving up their children. This is, in my opinion, a guy that we just don't see enough of these days. His name is Dick Wilson, better known as Mr. Whipple. He squeezed toilet paper on a record making 504 Charmin commercials, but how have his other acting prospects veered through the years? When was the last time you saw him doing Shakespeare in the Park or appearing in a Martin Scorsese film? Well... As it turns out, thanks to Vicki Lawrence, Wilson is finally getting a chance to flex those cramped acting muscles all over again. Please, these and tell me if they're Charmin. Where are they? They're here. Ha. Huh. Squeeze that. Okay, now you're going to have, I'll, I'll let you make a choice. So you don't have to make your decision right now, okay? You through? I'm through. Okay. Here is the second kind. Squeeze these. <laughs> what do you think between those two? This one. You think that one? But wait, I have one more for you to try. Okay. One more. One more. One more. Okay. Squeeze these. What do you think? So thrilled since I was yeah, laugh it up, big boy. Moments later, the police came in, busted Mr. Whipple. He'll be serving five to seven years in apparently the Chino State Penitentiary. Thursday, Vicky will get to know some fashion experts and find out how to look swank and stylish in the workplace. Bam! I'll be back in a moment. After this break, we're going to be checking out, I guess, the cutest little handgun you've ever seen. Plus, some spiteful twins fight over the same Prince Charming. We're back. It must be talk soup. You got to hand it to this man, Joey. He knows what he likes. He was attracted to Jeannie's good looks the first moment they met, but then he found out later that they weren't so emotionally compatible, so he started, you know, going out with her twin sister, Joy. Now, if you think about it, yeah, now he's got it all. The physical attraction he craves and the heartfelt love that he's been dreaming of all the years of his life. If only Jeannie could get used to the situation, right? Here's the Richard Bay Show. I want to say she must not be woman enough to get her own man. She got to go after her sister leftovers. And, and, and what is she going to do when he breaks up with the twin? Is he going to go to the mother, too? What's that? You were married. You were married. the tip off. Jeannie says she discovered Joey and Joy were having an affair when he bought a new apartment and moved Joy in instead of her. I know. On this Thursday show, some frustrated men and women try to talk to the people they love and talk to them about losing weight. I can't handle those handles anymore. That'll be Thursday, Richard Bay. 
Karen was just 12 years old when her 21-year-old boyfriend got her pregnant. Karen's mom has not pressed statutory rape charges. As she told Jerry Springer yesterday, as well as his audience, she feels Karen is responsible for her own actions. Right now you're going to meet Karen, her mother, and the baby who is at the center of this all-too-familiar story. Take a look at this. I just want to applaud these women that now have babies for doing the right thing and not having an abortion. But there's one thing that I'd like to say. These men that are over the age of 18 should be brought up on statutory rape charges. No, 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 no. Unfortunately, this is a cycle. This is a cycle in our society that needs to be broken now. And you women that have these children are the ones that have to break it. Yeah. Okay, now, let's, th that's a point, and I know it was going through people's minds when right. Derek stood up there and said, my gosh, she's 21, she's 12, that's against the law, and mom is saying no when she says, what about charges of statutory rape, why? I say no because she, my daughter, choose to be with him, and, and if she choose to be with him, and this is the consequence that happened, he have to face up to it, and she have to face up to it, why put him in jail for something that she choose to do? That's to say, you know, throw him in jail because he made a pregnant? No. Highlighted Jerry Springer. Karen says that the child's father has a job and provides most of her baby's financial support. Thursday, Jerry hears from a mom who says their kids are out of control. What to do when Junior is running amok? Thursday. The following trend catches on. Fashion designers are going to start creating matching pantsuit and holster ensembles, aren't they? They're going to be seeing strapless, bulletproof vests and for the truly daring semi-automatic bustiers. As gun expert Sherry Bateman pointed out, women apparently are def learning to defend themselves in style these days. You're about to see Mo as she checks out some of the latest firearm fashions for women. Take a look at this. These oh. are made specifically for women, basically, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. What is this? Okay, this one is a Smith & Wesson. It's um, called the Lady Smith. It's got an easy grip. It's very um, nice to handle as you can see, and it doesn't kick. It doesn't kick? Yeah. What is kick? <laughs> well, you know, you go like this. Oh, like that, right. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, okay. Oh, okay. now this, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I think that's beautiful. This is ridiculous, the little pink handle. <laughs> Isn't it cute? It, it comes in different and I would probably sleep too. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. kind of embarrassing that they think that for a woman, she'd want a nice gun with a pink handle. Oh, Isn't it? What do you think of these guns? Well, I think this purse. is my favorite. This is very cute. Oh, that's you can, your favorite? Yeah. <laughs> you can put it in your purse, you know, it's easy to hide and no one can see it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, and this, this is called the... Uh, uh, this is called the Larson. It's a 25 oh, the caliber. Oh, pretty in pink. Yeah. Yes, indeed, that cute little firearm. The pink number is also available in other colors. Is as well as, I believe, what did you say, Peach Passion, John? P Passion Peach? Is that your favorite? <laughs> Twilight Lilac and Flesh Wound Mauve is apparently another, another popular choice. You know, I just got my issue of Women and Guns magazine. I don't know if you've ever actually seen this, but you just flip through here and you just see some of the greatest, greatest photographs that you've ever seen. It's, it's crazy. I particularly like the centerfold for this month. It's thigh high. Yes, hey. On Mo Show, this Thursday, a couple of fun loving swingers talk about heating up their love life. In the kitchen, put on those oven mitts. It's going to be a scorcher. In a moment, you'll hear a couple of stories from people who survived the 6.6 .6 earthquake out here last week. That's coming up after this. Los Angeles 6.6 .6 earthquake out here reminded California just how bad things can get when the ground starts shaking. For Maury Povich, it brought to mind the San Francisco earthquake of 1989. Monday, Maury spoke to one of the heroes of that devastating natural disaster. It's Officer Jim Goodman of the California Highway Patrol. There was an aftershock that uh, I don't know what the Richter scale reading, but it was severe enough that the structure kept settling. Ah. Oh. When we first started uh, the I mean, rescue... You're, you're about to be buried alive. Possibly. Yeah. Um, it, but we had to get him out. His right leg was pinned underneath the dash. The dash was cl collapsed so far into his truck that it had crushed his, his right leg. Couldn't get his right leg so out. you had 30 inches at one point. That was at the beginning. And what did you have at the end? About 22 inches. 22 inches? 22 inches. About that? About, That's about all you this had. much. Right. 
um, I'm six foot four, and I'm on my hands and knees uh, trying to help get this guy out. I cut the seat and started pulling the seat stuffing out of the seat. Uh, we tried to, I tried to take, a, take the seat apart to, now you, to lower him down. You have to keep talking to this fellow. Well, to give Tim, him hope to carry on, right? Tim was great. He, uh, now, granted, he's under there for about four hours. And about three hours into this, he said, just cut my legs off. Just get me out of here. Well, <clears throat> we kind of, I, I was talking to him saying, nah, let's try this first. Let's do this. Let's do this. And, and giving him all sorts of other things so that we could think about him. And finally, you were able to get him out alive. It, after a while, we got him out. Jim Goodman there of the California Highway Patrol. Incidentally, when did they start wearing those smart-looking pastel blue bow ties? <sighs> Handkerchiefs might be a nice move. He's apparently a regular quake magnet, as chance would have it. He was here in L.A. visiting friends and family early last week when the earth rumbled and the walls came tumbling down. Thursday, Maury looks into the touchy issue of prenuptial agreements, sign on the dotted line, then say, I do, Thursday. Maybe a little ascot to go with it, just for the whole... Look, when Lorena Bobbitt was acquitted last Friday, many men across the country were outraged in spite of the obvious gender issues involved. Clay Kokalis is one man who believes justice was done fairly. After all, he was one of the jury members on the Lorena Bobbitt case, and he personally helped find Miss Bobbitt innocent. Here he is to explain to Sonia how he arrived at his decision. Clay, um, you're a guy. You've got a penis. People are saying, you know what message this sends? I mean, every guy's going to sleep on his stomach, worried about what women are going to do. Do you think it has that kind of impact? No, but I must admit, jokingly, my father has uh, sent my wife a set of carving knives uh, uh, just to be funny. And I, 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 that was one thing that worried me about the precedent. But, you know, I think each case is an individual case. And, uh, you know, I, I think that we all felt very comfortable with the decision. And I don't really think that factored into it. Sounds like Dad's got a real good sense of humor there, doesn't he? Instead of carving knives to Mrs. Coke Alice. Thursday, Sonia apparently is going to look into the issue of new black activism. A younger generation sets their eyes on the prize. Ricky Schroeder, going by the name Rick these days, doing a lot of work. In fact, he did a movie of the week. In fact, just last night, he showed up on the Today Show to discuss his role in that two-hour telefilm here he is now why do you think you have been able ricky to make the transition from child star to adult star what's helped you you think well i can't put my finger on and say well, this is the one thing that made me successful mm -hmm. it's many things um i'm very tenacious i don't give up and i mean i'm one of those people that will bang his head against the wall until it gets through mm -hmm. and sometimes i have a big headache afterwards <laughs> but i'll say it was worth it and then i think i'm blessed i think there is somebody watching out for me and my parents are also very fabulous parents and the best I could ever hope for. You were telling me about when you used to stay out till 3 a.m., how your mom was waiting up for you in the kitchen, and then what would she do when you walked in the door? She'd smell my breath and look into my eyes and uh -huh. make sure I wasn't too messed up. And, and if she smelled something on your breath, what would she do? Well, then she'd probably tell my father, and we'd play tennis the next morning. He'd get me out of bed like at 6 in the morning like a drill sergeant. And, of course, I you know, couldn't play. Playing tennis was your punishment? Well, no, he'd say to me, what's wrong with you? Why can't you hit the ball? What's wrong with you? What mm -hmm. are you doing? What are you staying out so late for? So they always kept me on a straight and narrow line. Rick Schroeder on the Today Show, Monday night. Rick appeared in the TV movie again to my daughter with love. Thursday on the Today Show, you're going to meet the band Crash Test Dummies. They'll be talking about their new album. We've got one more highlight loaded up just ahead. She may look like Cleopatra, but she's really Isla, queen of the gold diggers. We're back. One last clip for you. In Isla's case, the label gold digger might be, I guess, a little bit misleading. After all, digging for anything sounds a bit too much like manual labor for this woman. Even if she could unearth a king's ransom, this money-grabbing diva wouldn't think of getting dirt under those expensively manicured nails, would she? As she told Montel Williams, why work when she can have a guy do it for her? First thing, I have shrimp and lobster in my freezer. I have a pig in my deep freezer. I have a drop-top convertible in my garage. 
a tiger on my bed, a tiger in my tank, and a jackass to pay for it all. Hello. <laughs> Ooh, really? To pay for it all? To pay for it all. You expect a man to take you out, he's going to, it's just, it's, it's part of the whole process, he's got to pull out the credit exactly, card. Exactly, exactly. If you can't, I mean, if you can't pay, no, I wouldn't say pay, but if you can't, like, Buy show you me the finer things in life, then I could get out and get my own job. Right. You're going to have to come off something. Right, well, what, wait, 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 say that again. Who said that? Huh? Why don't you get your own job? You're not all that. Who's not all that? Exactly, you're that. nothing. You're not you all that. Not... I have all the money in the world. They probably you wouldn't give it to you. I'd rather give it to like Charity. You, baby. You because look at his body, like baby. Look at you. You <laughs> oh, boy. Had a pretty good argument going there, and then he tried the old look at this body thing, and it was over. I was teaching her three-year-old daughter, Shalonda, to say, I want a rich man, apparently. Do we have a shot of her sugar daddy by any chance? Do we? Oh, there he is now. Thursday on Montel's show, tune in. An unhappy mom explains why she thinks her three daughters are out of control to hear her tell it. Two of them are lesbians, and the third is a real mess. That'll be Thursday. That's going to do it for this talk show, folks. I'm Greg Kinnear. Stay safe. I guess we'll see you back here, John. Let's do this again tomorrow. What do you say? Yeah, why not? See you then. Have a good night. B&B, AMC, GH, if this means anything at all to you, and I know it does, then you'll want to stick around and watch Pure Soap, packed with highlights from all of your favorite shows. It's coming up next. Could you pass the Twinkie, please?